Welcome back. Now, there has literally never been a better time to get out there and do some photography so we can escape the rat race, avoid the news, touch grass and get creative. But I know a lot of you struggle with locations and finding good places to go and shoot. So in this video, I'm going to help you out and share my top five photography locations and what to shoot there. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to protect your privacy online, and you do, you really should, then do it with NordVPN. Right, we are going to work from number five up to number one. And I hope number one has some really nice surprises in there for you, a bit of inspiration to finish off the video. I'm not gonna be sharing exact locations with coordinates and stuff, partly because that is just so boring, but a lot of the places that I'm featuring in this video do have photography guides. And I actually use photography guides quite regularly, uh, particularly these ones from Photo View, because I really like all the practical information it gives you, which takes a lot of the stress out of finding new locations, like practical things like parking and accessibility and just general ideas of where to go, where there are opportunities to capture photography. You can look at the pictures as well, Try not to be guided by those too much. Do your own thing, come up with your own stuff. But yeah, I'm a big fan of photography guides. So starting with number five, we have the west coast of Scotland. Now, if you live in England or Wales, the first time you go to Scotland, it is almost overwhelming the sheer scale of it. You think you've got mountains in England and Wales, you think you've got landscape, it's just so much bigger in Scotland, so much more impressive, and it is completely inspiring. Scotland and the Highlands and the west coast of Scotland really deserves a video of its own. It's got everything. Mountains, it's got waterfalls, it's got castles, it's got rolling landscapes, it's got winter landscapes. And one of the great things about Scotland is if you are into wildlife photography, it is brilliant. It's got, you've got the white-tailed sea eagles, you've got deer, you've got pine martins, so much wildlife. It's so exciting. Red squirrels, stuff like that. However, the reason it's at number five on my list is that Every time I go to Scotland, I find myself, and this may be a positive for some people, I find myself driving around in the car a lot. Because it is so big, you kind of almost need the car to get to different photography locations. There are obviously hikes to be done, but there are a few times when I have hiked in Scotland, I've hiked for hours and ended up with the same view the entire time. Now this may be the route I'm taking, it may be my knowledge, I maybe need to hook up with some Scottish mountaineers, that kind of thing. But uh, I found it challenging. Jumping in and out of the car sucks my creativity out of my photography and it's just not the way I like to do it. If you do like to do it like that though, there are beautiful opportunities. So many amazing roadside compositions to be had. Scotland has got something for everybody. If you, I know it's a long way from the south of England. It's an absolute must visit though. Uh, and number five on my top five. My number four on the list is the Peak District. Now, I think the Peak District is an interesting one and it took me a long time to fall in love with the Peak District, even after going there numerous times. But I have now and I'll share with you why that is shortly. But one of the great things about the Peak District is it's very centrally located within England and it's accessible. So with good roads and stuff like that, which is great, but that also means that it does get very, very busy. And that's one of the things that used to put me off. It has some very well-known and photographed hilly areas, such as Mam Tor and Winnet's Pass. I love photographing those places. It has uh, Padley Gorge and it's just fantastic to visit. Loads of waterfalls, interesting scenery and landscape very, very nice. It has a whole plethora of interesting kind of edges at the top of hills and things. These are kind of, I think, the signature of the Peak District with those interesting rock formations, edges and heather, classic Peak District landscape. And also a lot of them are very accessible with just a small climb up a hill. And, and also there are some bigger hillier areas in the Peak District that are often very, very remote and very easily you can find 
and have that entire landscape to yourself. The main reason why more recently I've fallen in love with the Peak District though is because of the woodland. It's got a huge range of woodland, loads of different opportunities, loads of different options for you to go to, uh, different types of trees, different types of woods, some with on a moor as well, so you get bits of heather. It's kind of made me, over time, and it has taken time, fall in love with the Peak District. So the Peak District is number four. Ooh, there's some stunning light behind me there now. That is fantastic. Now number three is a little bit of a cheat because it's the coast, just generally the coast. And I wanted to include this because I think, I can't remember the exact stats, but I'm pretty sure around 90% of the world's population live within a hundred miles or so of a coast. So no matter where you live, you should have nearly some access to a coastline. In the UK, that's definitely true because we live in an island, it's not that big. We can all get to the coast and we can all do some photography there. Even if you are completely devoid of creativity, or maybe even a little bit of skill, go to the coast, point your camera out to sea and you can make great images, particularly if you do like a little long exposure or something like that. I love these sort of simple kind of shots and when your creativity is suffering a bit, getting one of these in the can can give you a big lift and they're just beautiful. I think people love them because they sort of tap in to that primal feeling we have when we're stood on a beach, sort of ingrained curiosity that we have that invigorates that sense of adventure in us and all that gets captured in those images, images, and I think that is really, really fun. Some of my favourite ever shoots have occurred on UK beaches and coastlines. There's just such a beautiful mixture of gorgeous beaches and dramatic cliffs, and they're often in the same place, like this one, that featured in the Avengers movie. My main reason for loving the coast and photographing seascapes, though, is that it isn't weather-dependent, it's not light-dependent, and it's not time of day or season dependent. You can go there at literally any time and capture great images. If it's raining or it's overcast, you can make the images black and white and create something dramatic and powerful. If you get there on a sunrise or a sunset, capture something colorful and amazing. The only time I would avoid it though is at school holidays because apparently normal people like the beach as well. Another reason I don't share exact locations is because of the frankly tragic news we had a little while ago that the Sycamore Gap tree had been vandalised and cut down. I was absolutely gutted when I heard this news because it's a famous and impressive tree that held a lot of meaning for people and I think that's why it created such a sort of swell of sadness about it and it's something that's been lost that we're never going to get back in our lifetime. This is the moment that I shot it. I'm happy that I got to immortalise that tree in this photograph, but it is a reminder that we are photographing the living landscape. I'm not prepared to share my exact locations to, to on this channel because it only takes one or two idiots to go and spoil a landscape. And if I have had some responsibility in sending those people there, well, I don't want to have to live with that. But I'm happy to share general locations so you then go and do the work you find the places and it's all the more satisfying when you do that number two i think you will be surprised that it's not number one is the lake district now in my opinion the lake district is possibly the finest place to go for a photography experience it has mountains lakes woodland moors, caves, thousands of waterfalls. It, it really is a photography paradise and there is a spot in the Lake District for every weather condition as well. The difference to Scotland though is that it's smaller, meaning that it's easier to explore, especially on foot. One of my absolute favourite walks is on the hills around Buttermere where you climb up and literally around every corner is a new view, a new thing to see, and a new thing to photograph. It's completely 
inspiring and so many of the tricks and the walks that you do in the Lake District are like that. You get new photo opportunities in different weather conditions, in different seasons, even at the very popular hilltop locations. I also find that there's still unique and interesting things to shoot. If you strap on a 70-200 or equivalent long lens to get in there to pick out those interesting parts of the landscape, and if you go, like I often do, in the morning or in the evening, you end up with those mountains entirely to yourself. I particularly love the Borodale Valley around Derwent Water and Keswick. That place has featured so many times on this channel. And there's lots, of, again, lots of different opportunities there within a couple of square miles of each other. The Lake District is just one of the most inspiring places you will ever go to. If you drive in from the A66, you get welcomed almost like, it's almost like a gateway when you see Blencathra Mountain towering over you. It's super exciting and the sudden change in the landscape is really dramatic as well. You will know when you have entered the Lake District. But, and there is a but, the reason it is uh, number two and not number one is because of the sheer popularity of it. Now, in the past, it was always quite busy in the towns, but it was okay. But since 2020, it's almost become horrendous. The people that now seem to visit were people that never went outside prior to a few years ago. And I just find them really annoying. I know they have as much right to be there as me, but it's super annoying at times. And also sometimes, on a more serious note, they are people that don't necessarily respect the landscape. We've had abandoned tents We've had huge wild camping sites where they've left a lot of rubbish and a lot of mess. It's very frustrating to see and witness. And if you lived there, I just I honestly can't imagine what it's like. But probably why I visit there a little bit less often these days. But still, I do go. And the times I like to go now are very early in the morning or very late at night. And I achieve this often by wild camping on my own respectfully leaving no trace it's not always easy as you saw in this video here but when you wake up on top of a mountain looking down over the world with some beautiful weather conditions some beautiful light and some incredible photography it's a priceless experience and a humbling experience and a transformative experience that i don't think can be matched Now we're doing a top five video today. So let me give you my top five reasons why I have been using the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN, for many, many years. Now, number one is privacy. When you browse around on the internet, you leave a fingerprint on every website and service that you touch. This is called your IP address and it can easily be tracked back to you. But using NordVPN, your IP address will be hidden from prying eyes and stop companies collecting data on you. NordVPN is like the lock on your door that stops people coming into your house to watch your every move. Number two is security. NordVPN enhances your online security by encrypting your connection. And this is particularly important when you're using public Wi-Fi networks to stop man-in-the-middle attacks. They also now have services that protect you from phishing, password attacks, malware, maladvertising, and ransomware. Number three is that NordVPN have servers all around the world and you can connect to them to bypass geo restrictions. Again, this is great for privacy, but it also means you can watch loads of additional content via your streaming services that you are already using. Number four is there are no logs whatsoever. Unlike your ISP or 5G provider who can watch absolutely everything you do, NordVPN have a strict no log policy, meaning it doesn't track, collect, or share your private data, vastly improving your privacy. Number five is that with just one account, you can protect up to six devices, including your phone, your tablet, your laptop, and your computer. And the best thing is you can try all this risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So hit the link down below or go to nordvpn.com FMP and you can start protecting your privacy online today. A few years ago when I was still running tours, I advertised a tour to this location, a four-day trip that I'd spent 
hours planning and I was convinced it was going to be one of the best tours I had ever run. Having sold out every other workshop that I'd ever advertised, I was then very confused when I didn't get a single person take up the offer of the trip. It took me ages to work out why that was, but I think it's because this little quiet corner of the northeast of England isn't very well known at all. People don't know there are photography opportunities there. Unlike the other national parks, it doesn't shout about it. It doesn't get the attention of places like the Lake District, but it absolutely is a hidden gem. And I am of course talking about the North York Moors and the Yorkshire coast. So rather than trying to convince you with my words, I'm just going to show you the abundance of photography opportunities that exist in this place because I've spent a large portion of my life now photographing this area and I am biased because I was born here and it's where I grew up. So it has, and I'm going to refer to my list because it's a long one, hills, heather, water, woodland, inland cliffs, coastal cliffs, more hills, lone trees for days, bluebells, more woodland, seascapes, unique seascapes, shipwrecks, lighthouses, inland cliffs, coastal cliffs, more hills and more heather, the same composition in all the seasons, dry stone walls, the same wall in winter, more winter and more winter, Simon Baxter, sunrise, sunset, heather and epic sunsets, moody skies, foggy woodlands, cloud inversions, Joe Cornish, more lone trees, delicate touches, me, leading lines, leading lines at sunset, the Medusa tree, world famous Whitby, waterfalls that make double rainbows for crying out loud, and I could go on and on and on, and if you're not even a little bit inspired to visit here, I don't know what to tell you. You can see some of these images in my book, Illumination, and include some of the stories of my time in the police dealing with some insane stuff, some funny stuff. I'd really love it if you supported me and picked up a copy and give NordVPN some love for sponsoring this channel. Protect your privacy online. I mean, it's so important and people just don't, don't seem to realise that. And you will realise it when it's too late. So protect your privacy online and do it with NordVPN. I hope you're inspired. I really do.